thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here. I want to begin not immediately by talking about whistleblowers or the position of Mr. Birch, but about something else very, very simple. Because I want to focus on what provoked this meeting, the immediate incident, what seems to have galvanized people around this issue about ethics in government. And that was a particular incident where a minister of the government lied. Now lying is a very interesting and important ethical concept. So it's something that, as a philosopher, I can talk about without fearing to tread in the grounds of, of the areas of expertise of my colleagues in law, for instance. And I want us to talk a little, just think a little bit about what's involved in lying and why truth-telling might be important. Because you see, it seems to me that truth-telling is a really simple sort of thing. Most of us know what it is to tell the truth. Most of, most of us would regard truth-telling as an obvious ethical virtue. So why then do we find people in public life lying? It's a really simple question. And it's the sort of question that maybe we shouldn't have to ask. I mean, we know that there are obviously reasons why people do lie, because we know those reasons from our, from our own autobiography. Sometimes we may be partial with the truth, or sometimes we may be not wholly accurate in our account of things. But the thing is, in public life, truth is much, much more important than it might be in any of our personal engagements. Why is that? Well, the reason is quite simple. Truth is actually what constitutes the open space in which public life is possible. When politicians lie, they don't merely engage in some little act of personal vice. What they do is they undermine the capacity, the possibility, for us to engage in politics as such, for us to engage in the public debate, the public scrutiny that's part of government, that's part of politics, that's part of public life. If a politician lies, what that does is not only undermine their own reliability and the confidence we might have in them to lead us, but it undermines process, it undermines our confidence in government as such, it undermines our ability to make decisions. How can you make a good decision? How can you know who to vote for if you can't be sure whether the people involved in that decision or the people whose vote is, who's, who's, who want your vote, unless you know that they're truthful? So truth is an absolutely basic ethical virtue. And without it, it doesn't seem to be possible for us to have good government or effective government, to have a government that we can believe in or that we can have confidence in. Now that's why I think a meeting like this is so important, because what it, a meeting like this is really about, and it's, it's real ground, it's, it's basis. One of the things you can think a meeting like this is about is about calling for some sort of real ethical practice in government. And that ethical practice has to be based around a commitment to truth-telling. But the funny thing about truth-telling is that it's tied up with attitude and with culture. I think the sorts of structures, there are, there are many structural reforms we could make to government in this state, and perhaps that we should make. But in the end, those reforms won't work unless we change the cultural, the, the ethical culture of government, unless we change our expectations of government, unless politicians change their expectations of themselves and we change our expectations of politicians. And the encouraging, the heartening thing about a meeting like this and about the comments I've had from many people over recent weeks in relation to these matters are that people do seem to have different expectations. They do want truth in government. They do want an attitude of transparency and openness. They do want ethics in government. The question is how to bring that about. Now, as I said, I think one of the ways of doing that, the crucial issue here is actually how do you change the culture of government? How do you change the attitude of our politicians so that they regard truthfulness, they regard transparency, they regard openness as a positive virtue that helps them in, their, in the activity of government that isn't just something that's going to create problems for them to keep office. Changing culture is more than a matter of new legislation, although it might require that it actually requires a different form of political and ethical education. Now that's one of the reasons why I, and also Sir Max Bingham, with whom I've had some involvement, have been calling for some sort of commission for ethics. Someone that can not only investigate in the way that a Royal Commission might investigate, 
but that can also try to educate politicians and perhaps educate the public and educate all levels of government about the importance of ethical conduct and what it consists of. And when it comes to a case like the events of the recent, of recent, recent weeks, the shredded letter and so on, one of the issues that we've got to address there if we start talking about ethics and truth-telling in government is whether or not a public servant, a state servant, who, as it were, puts the interest of the state service and the interest of Tasmania over the interests of the government of the day, whether such a state servant is acting wrongly. My suggestion is that such a state servant is not, and that the state service is only... a commitment to honesty, which is actually part of what the state service itself requires, means that there are indeed ethical requirements that are part of the responsibility of state servants, just as much as I believe they're part of the responsibility of government. And that means it's important to protect state servants when they do act in the public interest, rather than merely the interest of the government. But notice that distinction, the public interest and the interest of the government. They are not always the same. And one of the important things in a democracy and in a government in a country like ours is to recognise that they're not the same. But again, that comes back to a matter of culture. It comes back to a matter of understanding. So my real call, and the appeal I would make to Premier Lennon and to his government, to the Deputy Premier, is to think again about what it means to be in government, about the responsibilities of government, and the importance of ethics, and truth in government. Because the only government that's worthy of support is a government that has that sort of commitment, because only that sort of government can be a government that governs in our interests, in the interests of everybody, rather than merely in its own interests or in the interests of some small group. So if it's seen as a call for some luxury that we should expect over and above everything else that we expect governments to provide. It should be seen as a call for the very foundation of government, something for something that ought to be there at the very foundation of democratic practice. Thank you.